hello everybody welcome to my youtube channel and my show grub and rub with king tonto i am super duper happy to take you on a journey of at full deliciously plated meals while i have awesome discussions with my guests from all around the world and all walks of life for those of you who do not know me my name is king tonto i am the i said what i said king <laughs> I'm a mom, I am a philanthropist, I'm a lover of God, and now a YouTuber. So for this episode of Grub and Rob, we'll be talking about agriculture. Yes, agriculture. Most of you do not know that agriculture has been has played a very important role in securing Nigerians' future. So today, on today's episode, we'll be talking about how agriculture can be therapeutic and also can be a peaceful profitable business for you as an individual. Today, my guest is Promise Amaha, and he will be talking about all of these amazing things while we eat and feast on this beautiful meal. Come closer, come closer. So, for today's food on Grab and Roll, we have pasta. We have this pesto pasta and um, shrimps, prawns, whatever you call it. And we have um, this, I, I, I tasted it, but well, I'm not sure about the name, but it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It has tango. It's just beautiful. So, well, help me welcome my guest, Mr. Promise Amaha. Welcome to Grab and Rob, Mr. Promise Amaha. We're absolutely amazed to have you here and share your ideas. Pleasure, but man. thank you. Like the program says, grub and rub. Okay? So grub, we're gonna be eating. Rub, we're gonna be just rubbing mine. Ah, great. Alright? Great. Okay. So um I would give us like a minute or two to pick our choice of food so we don't have to eat and um, talk and do all of that. We have pasta, we have um spaghetti bolognese, we have mango salsa. This is actually then we have um, uh, pasta and shrimps, <laughs> and we have this amazing salad. So please dig in. Yes, we do. We actually do have a lot to eat. And I'm a foodie. Like I love food. <laughs> like who on earth has a food show <laughs> that is like this? Okay. Um. I'm not sure I'm a foodie too. I, I like food, but I'm not a foodie. Too. Oh well. Try. You try, you try, you try. So, Mr. Promise. Okay. Um You mean all this yourself by the way? No, no. I don't cook. I just eat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so could you um please introduce yourself as a um as a farmer, as an agriculturist? Um tell them what you do, tell them what it entails. Um just talk a little bit about what you do on yourself. Oh, okay. So I'll try and start from somewhere, I guess. Yes. So uh, basically, I love agriculture. Like, you love food. Okay. So that's that's been my passion and my love for the past um, 15 years. So Ooh. it's been a long time coming. Okay. Yeah. And um, what I try to do differently in agriculture is to introduce different strategies to enhance the value chain from local production to value-added services. Yeah. You're helping me out too. Oh, you, oh I could help you. Oh, sure. I'm my guest. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, so, okay. um, that's a bit about that. Then I'm currently also the Director General for the Nigerian Young Farmers Network. Oh, wow. An ecosystem of young people involved in agribusiness across the world. So, so we have female and male young farmers all within the network mm. and spread across the country. That's six states plus we have. Oh, that's beautiful. Members, yeah. now, can I surprise you? Go ahead, please. I am a farmer. You're I'm a joking. farm girl, You're yes. Joking. Yes, I have one of the biggest farm fish in Abuja, and I, my son has one of the biggest plant plantation in Abuja. How come we don't know about that? Um, we just started two years ago, but it's been an interesting thing. It's something that I've always wanted to do, hmm. but I met the right company that will help me manage it, and we just keyed into that. that. Yes, wow. yeah. That's so that's perfect. why it's really important that I have you here, so I can <laughs> I can <laughs> pick your brains and all of that. That's good to know. That's good to know. Yes. So, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of advantage for a mileage for the network because um, we have a, a group in the network called the Young Female Farmers under the network. Okay. That you need to hear that King Toto. 
Quinteto does does farm too, mm. right? So mm. not just being a baby, you do you do farm thing. It's really nice, right? Amazing. Nice. That's beautiful. So as a farmer, I do know that there are challenges. Okay? Yeah. And um, just like there are challenges in every aspect of life. So what are the challenges that you face as a Agripreneur. That's what you call they call us, right? Agripreneur. <laughs> no. I'm learning. Such a big name. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> anyway, basically the challenges are enormous. Yeah, when when I started out trying to get to know more about agriculture a long time ago, agriculture was nobody's business when it comes to young people getting involved in agriculture. There was huge apathy to agriculture, so young people don't really care to get involved in ag agriculture. Thankfully, gradually, with our efforts and, you know, the people like you getting on board now, the awareness is beginning to deepen. So first of all, the awareness about what agriculture represents is a major challenge. Mm. Of course, the biggest challenge is traditional agriculture and modern agriculture. Okay. So a lot of traditional agriculture takes place in the society, which is less attractive to the modern agriculture. Okay. But gradually now, we need to migrate from traditional agriculture to modern agriculture. So we've gone past the who and cutlass age. Mm. We're talking about tractors now, we're talking about drones, we're talking about artificial intelligence in agriculture. So that's the in thing in agriculture. So those are a few of the challenges we've had to deal with. Mm. Oh, wow. Again, uh, I'd like to speak quickly about data. Okay. Yeah. Since independence, um, Nigeria has developed agriculture without... Sorry, love. That's fine. Without having a verifiable database. For agriculture, right? We have a lot of government players get involved with little or, or minimal private sector engagements in agriculture. Okay. So what we're trying to do differently at the Young Farmers Network is to first of all develop a healthy database for agriculture to be able to help people have a great understanding of um, the beauty the agribusiness shows up, right? So. That's that's part of the challenges. So I can go on and on. There are several challenges, several gaps. But of course, you think about you know, from traditional to modern, to data, to information, awareness, who needs to do what, who's agriculture for. So those are a couple of challenges we've had to deal with over a period of time. And then mm. we're beginning to gradually change the narrative. Mm. For example, the biggest thing that's happened right now is that we just identified that you're a farmer too. Oh, yes. So that has a psycho psychosocial influence on your network, mm. on your followers, on your fan base. A lot of people now realize that if King Tonto can, can also... do it, yeah, yeah. So, I actually, like I said, I actually said like two years ago, um, less than two years ago actually. And when I started to post it, I started to realize that I started to encourage the young mm -hmm. minds. People want to do this, but they do, first of all, they don't know how to start. Mm -hmm. There are two kind of people. I want to do it. I don't know how to start. I, I want to do it. I have the money and have, I'm clueless. And I think that was my problem. I had the money to do it for a long time, but I was so clueless. I had to physically get myself back to reading about agriculture, things I learned like when I was like a baby baby, so I could grow with my farm. I, I, I see it as a very personal project because everything is living and they grew with me. I grew with them. So for me, my farm is really very personal. So. When I put it out there on my social media about my farm, so I really personalize it. I call myself farm girl, you know. I tell them the perks and the benefits of being a farm girl. And um, I get a lot of young people come to me in my DM. I'm like, you know, I want to start a farm. I have this money and I want to start a farm. You, you inspire me to do this. So I think that people like us, the young generation, getting into farming again, just like our, our, gen, our, our forefathers did, is actually very liberating. Mm -hmm. First of all, I think it's thera therapeutic. Once I'm around my farm, I'm around my cows, my, my chickens, my pigs, I feel... Reconnected Thank to you, nature. to nature. Yeah. Like, I feel part it of talks, like it's what is going on, talks. yes. Mm -hmm. And for for just some certain reason I don't understand, anytime I'm in my farm, I just love to just put my leg on the soil and just... Like, I think that's how I just connect to nature and everything. So I have so much passion for it, and my passion shows when I talk about it, and that has increased a lot of interest with the Nigerian youth today. Fantastic. And I think so. I think some, that's something that we, you would have to do. Yeah, I'll work with you on that, that so that, we could yeah, do that. Yeah. Really, yes, really yes. Quickly. Amazing. You know, but you're not eating my food though. I am. I'm just really, agriculture is my first love before food. So. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm just really overwhelmed with agriculture. Food. Each food. Yes, it is. That's how you so, go for. See, see, only a food you will be talking like this. I tell you, I love food. <laughs> But, okay. But that's fine. I don't want to lose a bit of this. Okay. And I'll come back to the food. <laughs> Can you tell us more about the young um, young farmers network? Where it's situated and how people can be part of it? Because I didn't know and I've been in farming for two years and you didn't know, even know about me and I didn't know about the organization. Sure, so yeah, so can you yeah, share yeah. that? Let me speak, let's that. speak that quickly. Well, what motivated motivated the, the uh, creation of the Young Farmers Network was my personal experiences. I have farmed across literally the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria. I've experienced farming in the north. I've experienced farming in the, across board. So I've been able to interrogate the process, identify what the problems are. Uh, one time I traveled to Plateau State, I have a rice farm in Shandam in Plateau State, and I tried to join the locals to trash manually the mm. rice farm. I couldn't trash more than twice and I had blisters all over my hands. Mm. So, you know, no young person wants to be identified with that kind of very yeah. onerous, hectic process, right? Right beside those young guys are mechanized farmers using harvesters to, to harvest and trash their rice, the rice grains from the, from the farm. So you see, there's a great gap when it comes to mechanization in agriculture. So basically, the Young Farmers Network was born out of identifying these gaps and then deciding to, you know what, let's create something that will be much more interesting. So I'll tell you a few of the unique selling points of the Young Farmers Network. We have a strategy called the GEAR strategy. Okay. And G in the GEAR strategy means gather. Okay. And in gathering, we're mobilizing all the stakeholders, we're getting young people to get involved. We are gathering data. We're gathering stakeholders. We're gathering all the key players and things in the, in the ecosystem called agriculture. Then in the E is the equipment phase. Now you've gathered these people. What's the next thing to do? You need to equip them. You need to equip them with the right tools to equip them with the right machinery to be able to carry out these activities. Then the A is activation. You've gathered, you have equipped them, and you need to activate them. Mm. And when you're activating them, you're talking about financial access. Mm. How do they sustain, you know, because that's all the young people wants to know. Mm. How do I get funding to get into okay. agriculture? What else do I do? What, how do I activate? How do I meet my consumers? How do I meet my clients and customers? So you activate them, and once you're done with that, the final phase is to release them. Okay. You released young entrepreneurs and agricultural entrepreneurs, as they call them, who are able to create more direct and indirect jobs. So that's basically the strategy of the Young Farmers Network. But the mind-blowing thing is that everyone can be a member of the network. Okay. If you're a doctor, you're a nurse, you're a lawyer, you're an engineer. In fact, we have several people. We have lawyers, we have engineers, we have um, doctors within the network. Excuse me. Yeah. And the beauty is that we're saying that yeah, the, the agriculture as, as, as a sector has cross-cutting relationships with everything. So if you're a farmer, you need to be healthy. To stay healthy, you need medicine. Mm. To, be, to have medicine, you need access to a doctor. So everything within the network is provided within the network. So you, know, you don't need to look for a job if you're a doctor within the network. And you don't need to be a farmer per se, pr pr practically going to own a land. Mm. You know? So yes. you're connected to young people who need access to healthcare, basic healthcare, they are your immediate um, clientele, you build a relationship okay. because what is missing is socioeconomic cohesion. Young okay. people don't have, you know... Can you break that down? <laughs> <laughs> break that down. We have to break that down. Yeah. So, so if you look at what unites young people in Nigeria, basically, um, mostly the grab. You understand, we're all on social media, we're looking at fashion trends, you know, luxury, things we can't even afford as young people is, is a gram. It's basically drugs, alcohol, mm -hmm. do you understand, you know, you know, travels and all that, right? So a whole lot of stuff that they don't have the economic capacity to control are the things that occupy most of our time, right? Even in the digital space, how many young people are strong leaders, considering a population that 65% are made up of young people, do you understand? Yeah. So what I'm talking about is socioeconomic cohesion, right? I'm going to talk a little bit about politics now, so I hope we don't um, digress. <laughs> so, so there was this thing that trended at some point. I'm not a politician. <laughs> I'm not too. I'm just a farmer. Mm -hmm. Called not too young to run. Oh yeah, you heard about that? yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome movement. But... I got on that bandwagon though. I know. I with um, YPP. Good, good. good. No. And it was such a huge success. Mm. It went through first and second reading and was adopted and was signed. Then the question is, how many young people are able to sponsor local elections? needless of winning those elections after you've gone to get the endorsement for not too young to run. Mm. 
Do you understand? What is then missing is the economic capacity for young people to be able to engage in such in initiatives. So my idea is, let's have a not too young to grow, first of all, mm. before you're able to run. <laughs> before you're able to run, you need to crawl. Yeah. You need to walk, mm. then you can run. Mm. So we need to graduate that stage organically mm. and then be able to create those opportunities in, for young in people. The sh in, in a nutshell, the process. The process. Just, just the process. Mm. So you don't you don't drop the gun and then you're you're in. So, for example, now what we're doing in the six states in Nigeria is that we can control the food chain. We can be responsible for food security across board, and everybody's interconnected. And then we're able to say, okay, now we have capacity. We have economic capacity. That economic relationship is what I refer to as socio-economic cohesion. So you're my friend, and I'm your friend. And beyond just talking about other irrelevant tribal things, we're talking about how to make money. Make money, yeah. <laughs> how to create wealth through agriculture. And it's no longer a long-term thing. Mm. For example, rice that is one of the biggest uh, initiatives the government is pushing. It's a 90-day a program. 90 to 120 days from planting to uh, maturity. Your rice is ready. And everybody eats rice. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure we're talking about yeah. rub and rub here. So, you know, the next time we're going to see basmatic rice and all sorts of grains, yeah. right? So, yeah, we, we so, do have so, grains. So, yeah. if you have a, a rice farm, which is a huge demand, we're not food sufficient in the rice production. Mm, we're not, yeah. we, we, don't, we don't have the capacity to yeah. be able to ensure that within 90 days and 120 days, you earn cash, you're doing what you love. Yeah. So, creating these narratives will begin to motivate more young people to create that bonding. Once we are united by socio-economic you know, uh, uh, ideologies, then we can start changing unemployment, creating revenue, and building a new youth that mm -hmm. can now stand up to our old leaders and say, you know what, we've got what we wanted. Now we can decide what happens to us. Mm. We're no longer leaders mm. of tomorrow that never comes. Yeah. <laughs> We're here right now yeah. with the capacity. That's another way you just came into to make me understand why we are not even uh, ruling, yeah. you know? We need to be in a, in a in a space of capacity that's in where we can be capable of doing these things. Collecting at the yeah, list. Yeah. Collecting at the list. Yeah. So um, King Toto is doing fish farming, she's doing pig and everything. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to also go create a fish farm or pig or stuff. You approach King Toto and say, you know what, I can create value added services. Mm. Young people need to understand what is called the value chain. From primary production to harvesting to processing, to packaging, to branding. To branding. Branding is part of agribusiness. And it's a yeah. whole lot. So if you're a graphic guy mm. and then you're not earning so much, imagine how many um, SMEs are in yeah, agri operation that yeah, you can support yeah. and provide branding I, I like. I mean, this this um, pandemic uh, period, yeah. no, I know that my graphic guy made almost 10 million there because we had to pack it. We had a, a lot, lot a to lot distribute and we were, we were all constantly so, so, doing that. So imagine that's, that's not going to be a one-off and he's in a network that has about 10 million people. Mm. And those 10 million people require branding for their products mm. from vegetables to beans to all sorts. So you don't have to jump into owning a, a farmland. Yeah. There are value-added services you can Stand, graduate from. Yes. You can start any money from there and build, and build capacity. Well, that's amazing. Right? So there are promotions. There are promotions too done for farming. I'm sorry, I'm digging a bit deeper. No, you have to because and I would love you to actually look at them and actually tell them, <laughs> yes, because I didn't even know some of these things you were telling me. I, I mean, unconsciously, I, I do understand them, okay? But it just never really... I never really talked about it in this light or this form. Sure. So please, you can educate us. Please. So okay, so we have social media influencers, you know, and there's a huge space for agricultural export, right? So we decide to also carry out production of small businesses in agriculture and create visibility for them online, online visibility for agriculture, right? So you're part of the Young Farmers Network and you don't have to own the land to have that capacity. You have the skill to do cinematography, you have the skill to do photography, and you can connect it right back into agriculture. So you see, agriculture is one area of life that connects everything, everyone, and anything you can just imagine. Mm. Just mention one thing or one career, and I'll tell you how you connect. How to you can connect it? Yes. Sure. Okay, I talked. I talked to the lawyers within our network. I said, okay, so basically, we have optic agreements between the farmer and the processor. Mm -hmm. There's a business relationship for optic. So we have what we call contract farmers. So the contract that connects contract farmers to the people who sell their products are done by lawyers. Mm, yeah. Right? So you have three million 
farmers that you provide contract agreement Which, services to. Sure. So you sit back and relax and your clientele is already in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So that's the beauty of the ecosystem. So it's, you know, everything is a melting pot for everything. Right? Now back to influencers like you. Because I need to put you on the spot immediately. So you know how we're <laughs> going to partner. Mm -hmm. So I met Don Jazzy in um, Ivory Coast um, two years back. And then came for one of the African Development Bank programs. And then we ran into each other and I spoke to him about what we're doing. I said, you know what? It's about time influencers like you, you know, begin to promote, you know, agribusiness and agriculture to an extent. And I'll tell you what, so um, the uh, early days when I, I, I knew Debanj, Debanj did something called Coco Gary, if you remember. Yes. Good. So the question is, yes. where is Coco Gary right now? Mm. Right? Good. So, yeah, Debanj, where is Coco Gary? Good. I like that. So, well, I actually did like, liked it. Um, it when, was, when you it was that, amazing. I, yeah. You know, I was I, I I was dying to be part of that program. Yeah, it was really it was so crunchy and you know, just gives you some satisfaction. Packaging, yeah, the packaging. The idea of the cocoa. I was it. actually um we were actually in the, the same team. We we're actually working together when we Brilliant idea. So the reason why it's amazing. I, I'm not directly trying to call out the badge, but I think it needs to No, but it, it, it's, to it's, it's a healthy calling yeah, out. Yeah, yeah it's for him to so, go back and so because he inspired me. There are millions of Nigerians looking out looking out for the badge to see how Coco Gary has become transformational and creating mm. jobs mm. for young people mm. so they can connect they can be um suppliers to demand yes. so they can go, get into cassava farming just to make sure they meet up with the demand for the banjis coco gary mm -hmm. and there's a connectivity there mm -hmm. so i'm trying to promote the program we're going to work on together definitely so i'm just buying it right now yeah. but one celebrity one product okay all the top influencers in nigeria the greatest you know export in nigeria now is the entertainment industry and we need to leverage on that to reduce to reduce unemployment in Nigeria and to live in that to increase our GDP and revenue. Mm -hmm. Right? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, so so we need to we need to up our game one celebrity, one product. Okay. So you know you have uh, King King Toto's fishes, fishlets, whatever it's called, yeah. you know. So one product <coughs> by well, the time yeah, we, I get we you. can have one on one, but at I least you. Then, you know, so we, we put up in the social media app, you know, the domain there where all the young people gather like birds every day. We wake up to check what's this that we're seeing first and all that and then there's one celebrity one product so a don jazzy now it should be promoting what product now don jazzy i mean no disrespect maybe it could even be con yeah yeah it could be con it looks thick mm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean to say that i didn't mean to say that i didn't mean to say that <laughs> so 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 lagos lagos is introduced to the Don Jazzy's yam, right? <laughs> so Don Jazzy has a yam farm and then introduces the yam into the market, the yam tubers into the market. Yeah. And then you know, Excuse the me. whole process of that begins to get young people who really look up to such influencers like you, the Banj and the rest of them, you know, what's going on. So so Whiskey's okra. Yeah. Have you tried it out? Just just to know. I'm guessing you know, I guess where you're scenarios. coming from. Yeah. So so mm -hmm. there's a coalition of celebrities to promote agricultural development in Nigeria and to create more jobs in agricultural value Chinese, chain. Yeah. One celebrity, one product mm. in a partnership with King Toto, who's already right down there. The whole of your co celebrities want to look out to see how you've succeeded in your family Some, yeah. yeah, so they want to also get involved. Yes. Yeah, so that's they don't true. know how. That's true. And it's simple. That's true. It's simple. If King Toto could do it, then why can't that's you? True. That's true. Right? That's true. It's encouraging me to share more of my family oh, stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I would do that more because I, I like I told you, anything I do, I encourage somebody. So if you feel good about agriculture, other people need to also feel good. Beyond the feeling good, a lot of young people need to stop online begging. Oh yes. So instead of oh, coming yeah. to to your beg. comment section to come and see are you doing a giveaway now or stuff they are beginning they begin to learn skills on how they can connect and promote your business so you yes. say okay there's this brand i have this fish strategy so you create a network marketing within your agricultural product so you know i could give you guys discounts to retail this yeah. and make a profit yeah. out of it okay. yeah you know, so gradually we'll start you know, changing yeah, changing the narrative and then you know you know creating healthy social media engagements and online engagements that's amazing i think you're right i yeah. i absolutely think you're right and um if you're out there thinking to be a farmer or you're a farmer not making a headway please try and reach out to mr promise amaha he'll be able to put you through and you can reach out to me too i'm, I'm a beginner but i have so much passion for my for for agriculture and, and that has made me thrive so hard
and um, I'm succeeding. And um, it's it's amazing. I mean, it's it's very lucrative. It's very productive. Excellent. It's another way for it's us. It's not long term. It's short term. Yeah, short term. Yes, yeah, it is. So. It's also another way for us as Nigerians to come together to curb hunger, poverty, and unemployment. In my farm, I have over thirty people as workers. Mm -hmm. I have I have helped the society. Sure. And sure. I think in there too, and those my fa yeah. families will yes. depend on yes, right? we depend on them. So it's 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 a whole it's a whole lot it's it's more than you it's more than me it's yeah. it's everyone is getting yes everybody getting needs involved. to get involved one way or the other and um like he said there are other aspects of agriculture that you can get involved in you don't have to have a land mm -hmm. i didn't have a land when i started i used someone's um, services mm -hmm. i had to get a, a fish and mm -hmm. then i think a pound of fish then can i tell you something yeah. I, yes, please. Sorry, i'm not trying yeah. to cut in that's okay so you see within your farm there are different services that you require on a daily basis yes so you have the fish feed you have the the vaccines or the medical treatments applied to the animals. You have a whole lot of value chain to operate on. So these young people can actually become farm input dealers. Yeah. There are a lot of farm inputs that the farms require. Let's also all go jump jump, jump into, into yeah yeah. The, so the so the you want to start small, get used to the system, you know, get used to being part of yeah, part of it first. Yes. So you can develop into slides and, and, and grow from there, and then you. from there it gets you more acclimatized. You start embracing the process. And you take less risks, mm. you understand. Let's talk about uh, the growing content, coronavirus, and how it affects agriculture. There's a looming food crisis because of the coronavirus. Yeah. It's affected everything and anything you can imagine, including the, the food chain, food production, right? So the farming season is affected by that. So the next harvest, we've seen a, a, a huge drop in agricultural production in Nigeria. So how are we all going to feed? We are over 200 million people and there's no food. So that's crisis in the building. That's crisis building up. But we have incredible manpower. We have incredible young people who are ready to work. The only way to cope this and help food security is now mobilize these guys. Yeah. And that's where King Toto comes in. And I wish you announced almost here that King Toto is one of the foremost ambassadors of <laughs> the Nigerian Young Farmers Network. So, <laughs> so she's in. Yeah. So you're going to be asking us questions <laughs> about you know how to get involved in agriculture and then learn from Toto's experience and scale it up to the one celebrity, one product. We'll do that together, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, we will. We'll yeah. definitely put something together for One celebrity, public, one product. Yeah. So yeah. we're announcing a series yes. of programs that will help young people get involved yes. in agriculture. Yeah. And that's where to go. True. So before then, you reduce more of unemployment, you create zero hunger, partner with international pro um, zero organizations poverty. like World Food Program. Yeah. You're already well, doing so well. And thank you're you. I'm going to know more. Thank How could you. I be here? I don't know your own farm. I do. I imagine? actually do. So, so, so. I, you know the best thing about owning this farm? I don't even struggle to even take my products. I have companies who come take my fish when it's mature, dry it up and send them back. They just package it nicely. I think they have the license You'll to, build that relationship to pack it. Yes. yes. So yes. young people can connect to that relationship. Yes. They can leverage and yes. a lot more. Mm -hmm. So if the produce and, and partner with what you're doing, doing, they have more visibility. They have access to markets. Market linkages are a major problem. So you see creating products and you don't have access to markets is a major problem yeah. too. And the well, farming has been one business that I have never had to advertise to make so much money out of and has been one business that I didn't have to put so much to make so much money out there. Uh, to, to, I didn't have to put so much money in to make so much money out. I'll tell you one secret I use for my farm. Now, most times uh, I do understand that when you have livestock, uh, farmers tend to, we, we tend to spend so much on feeds and treatments of your livestock, okay? No, it's your uh, uh, your livestock. That's yeah, a little, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Your livestock. And uh, one method I got was I brought people from Cameroon who taught me how to do feeds. So I produce my own feed. Awesome. So I've cut I've cut like almost fifty percent of my daily enhancing, cost. Enhancing yes. Your, your so profits. I make so much more profit. Awesome. And um, as as a long run, as God will bless me, I would also want to have a manufacturing feed oh. component where I do so many other uh, livestock. Uh, Food. Yeah, so I think most of you farmers can actually do that. If you don't know how to do it, you go into the internet, surf for it, learn it. You can also call people to actually teach you. It's very important to maximize your spending doing when you are a farmer so you can actually get so much more product because okay. farming is very lucrative. Lucrative. I've been living on farming for two two years. I've bought a house out of farming, I've bought cars out of farming. Farm, sure. And it's so they need to hear this. It's now. amazing. So you, so you can tell yes. that it's not just being the entertainment. The, thing, the things I have achieved being a farmer two years, I have never achieved being a celebrity for ten years. Awesome. And that's the truth. Awesome. Awesome. It's, it's, it's something that I've never achieved. Yeah. So I think farming is so lucrative, and we need to 
actually plug in. Yeah, right. plug in okay. and make this the, yeah, the use. Right. So I mean, instead of carrying our laptops and having your wood these days, we can do farming. Mm -hmm. And so if you get farming, we can make so much more. A whole lot. A whole so lot. much more, and I tell if, you. If you find your, yourself missing your way on the internet, <laughs> just run to the Yangren Young Farmers Network. Yes. It's open to everyone. Please tell them the, your website so they can come www.youngfarmerng.ng and our social media handles is at Young Farmer ng so it's a lot more easier just young farmer ng i would yeah. do you a favor and i'll have collect all these details and put it below so you can actually do it and go because i want young people especially women i want women to be so empowered that they don't even recognize bullshit that's what it is okay yeah, so get your groove on <laughs> Okay, I was going to ask you a question, but in the in the midst of you talking about um, um, the process, yeah. you already gave me an answer. I was okay. going to say, what are the challenges that the young farmers face today? Mm -hmm. Well, you already told me that it's sponsorship. Yeah, it's... beyond sponsorship, first of all, information. What what do you know about agriculture? What do you know about agriculture? True. What you see, you know? uh, on my head, I just uh, thought money. The good scripture says, uh, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. So what you don't know, you can make the mm. best out of. So mm. you first of all need to get the right mix of information, information. so you know how to plug in. Yeah. Sponsorship for me comes towards the lead end. And that's why we say our strategy is gather, equip, and activate. Activation is where you're now talking about, okay, what kind of funding mix do you need? How can you uh, co-share risk and reward amongst the so you can if you want to raise a million naira and then you can raise that all by yourself and you have 10 young farmers who you met within the young farmers network and you guys share the same ideologies or passion of what you want to do but on the network you can meet other young farmers oh, oh amazing yeah, so it's, it's a community all about that socio-economic conversion that sounded like an ambiguous yeah, thing yeah okay that's what it is you know, it's a community of okay. young people engaging in agriculture okay right so you meet people you never met before so so you meet Musa in Adamawa is able to connect with Temeka in Anambra and also connect with Bamidele in Oshun State. Mm. They never knew themselves before mm. now. They've created the relations within the, the network and they have peculiar interests. Maybe um, uh, Emeka is interested in trading onions and onions don't, don't quite grow within the east yes, yeah. right so, so it connects you can call to Musa already, yeah and oh. then the mm. friendship and relationship mm. is built up together mm. and then there's trust so it's goodwill friendship and trust the trust you're right very critical for those you're relationships. right so you're right that's that's you're what's right. up that's the, the last but not the least question we, I, I would i'm very upset with you now it's in my favorite that's okay <laughs> that, that's okay but the last but not the least question i'm going to be asking you it's a it's a very sensitive one but something that i think the people need to hear um how do you think the government can come in and help the youth become great farmers again. Because we need them. We, we really need them. Like I, for one, I, I think I, I deserve that the government called me and said, oh, you're doing so well. I mean, you, you have this, take this land somewhere and go and start multiple farm this thing, or take this amount of money somewhere and go and, you know, buy tra tra trailer, train people to do agriculture. I mean, I mean, I think the government, it's high time the government looking to it. Because that's another way for you to put the country forward first and actually for you to curb hunger, um, poverty, and unemployment, and what they call danger in the streets, violence. Because when you don't have people going to work, when you don't have them a being- A hungry man is an angry man. Thank you. I do man is a, what they say, devil's <laughs> workshop. It's just simple. So what do you think the government needs to do? Um, so first of all, in the global demand um, pyramid, food sits at the top before drugs, before alcohol, before crude oil, which is been what everybody has been running to. So the demand for food is the greatest need of man. That's why it's on the top. Mm. So you can never go wrong with the business of food. So government needs to internalize this. Why are paying attention to crude oil, which the prices crashed and we almost got into a recession. Imagine if our agricultural sector was, was very healthy, yeah. mm. was very mm. empowered, mm. we wouldn't have those issues. You're right. So my advice to government is to support data um, data sensitive initiatives like what we are doing at the Young Farmers yeah. Network and also beyond um, you know, rhetorics to um, create an enabling environment and then that word enabling environment seems to be just what it used to be all the time. So we're saying government, you know what, this, the average age of the farmer in Nigeria, World Bank Statistics 2019 is 55 years old. So the average farmer in Nigeria is 55 years old. For a country that we have 65% of the population as young people. How mm. do you have the average age of your, your, your farmer at 55 years old? Okay, the irony is that the same average age of, um, of uh, the, the death, the um, life expectancy Sorry. is also 55 years old. 
So if our farmers are also going to die almost immediately, <laughs> <laughs> you, you see why trouble, right? Yeah, really in trouble. So, so mobilization, 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 mobilization. The government yeah. should be the ground running, partner with the Young Nigerian Farmers Network to mobilize young people to get involved. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your My presence pleasure. here. Thank you, so thank you very much for watching Grab and Robbie Kington. So I hope you did enjoy this episode because I did. I mean, as a farmer, I got a lot. I'm going to be joining his organization, his community to learn more, to meet other farmers so I can grow and also grow other people because there's no need for me being empowered when I cannot empower other oh, people. Awesome. The reason I am who I am is so I can bring other people to be more than who I am. So thank you very much for watching. If you have interest in um, agriculture, do not fail to look for the link below that will take you to his website or you look for me on any social media platform sure. and I will talk to you and I'll give you more guidance. Thank you very much. And as always, my big lips will always come through. I love you, babies. Thank you. So we do have a present for you. Um, we love wow. to appreciate people who come on our, our set. It's not easy for you to share your knowledge. Yeah, so thank you very much. These are just few sets of our favorite designers package we just put it together for you so <laughs> no, it's my I hope you do like it <laughs> I love it already yeah, thank, thank you, you so thank much. you you're welcome thank you thank you, you. Oh.